Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending my presentation about our high power OPCPA systems for in vivo two and three photon brain imaging. My name is Michael Schultz and I am CTO of Class 5 Photonics GmbH. The motivation of the work presented is the recent development in brain research, which is a hot topic in biological investigations, especially behavioral studies. Researchers want to understand how the brain works, example given memory formation and learning. For this, neurodynamics are captured with high speed and over a large volume of the brain. Multiphoton microscopy with infrared lasers has become the standard technology for these. These are applied to green fluorescing markers to image the neuronal networks via three photon or two photon absorption of active areas in the brain. These studies are done in vivo, putting large demands to the laser systems used in the setups. Researchers still want to improve the capabilities of their systems by imaging deeper tissue, larger volumes with faster frame rates and spatial resolutions to resolve single cells. The deeper the imaging depth in the tissue becomes, two photon processes get less usable for the applications due to the scattering of the energy at higher levels of the tissue. Three photon processes overcome this constraint and are used for deep tissue imaging. For scanning large volumes of the brain, the combination of these two techniques is an optimal approach. For this, a well-synchronized two-photon and three-photon laser output is required. To provide good image quality over the large volumes, the laser additionally has to fulfill high demands, such as uh, high enough pulse energies to drive the three-photon proce absorption processes, short pulse durations close to their Fourier limit, not to dissipate additional heat in the sample, remember we have in vivo studies with living specimens, and high repetition rates for fast image acquisition. With that in mind, I want to present to you our White Dwarf OPCPA, which is powered by a coherent Monaco pump laser. This system is tailored for the special needs of biologists, uh, especially for the ease of operation and the output channels at the certain wavelengths, uh, which are desired by the different markers. Let me start with the system layout. All of the channels are pumped by a common pump laser, which is the coherent Monaco in this case. The output of this laser is split into two paths, which is once used for the white light generation process for seeding the different channels. The other part is used for second harmonic generation for pumping the individual OPA channels. The white light output is stretched with a material stretcher to accommodate for the different um, spectral bandwidths which are needed for the different channels. Uh, then amplified in the OPA systems, in this case we have a 960 nanometer and a 1300 nanometer channel and uh, the output afterwards is compressed close to its Fourier limit, the 960 nanometer close to 100 femtosecond, 1300 to 50 femtosecond. The spectrum generated by the white light generation is uh, divided into a blue shifted and a red shifted part. The pump wavelength of 1030 nanometers is broadened in a yak crystal to have a C source at 960 nanometer, which is marked here, and also 1300 nanometer, which is marked here. In addition to those two output channels, also wavelengths of up to 2 micron can be amplified in the OPA system since they are C generated by our white light generation. The amplified output spectra of the two individual channels are shown here. In case of the 960 nanometer channel, a Fourier transform limited pulse duration of 84 femtosecond is possible with that spectrum. In terms of the 1300 nanometer output channel, we have the peak of the power exactly at 1300 nanometers, which is slightly tunable as well. And the Fourier limited pulse duration here is 43 femtoseconds. Let me now show you the results of the compression of the individual channels. We have performed frog measurements for both outputs at 960 nanometer and also 1300 nanometer, which I will show on the next slide. The Fourier limit pulse duration was 84 femtosecond for this channel, and we have achieved a pulse duration of 90 femtosecond here. At 1300 nanometer, we have achieved a pulse duration of 45 femtoseconds, which is pretty close to the Fourier limit of 43 femtosecond presented before. But in the end, having compressed pulses at the exit of the laser is not the full truth of the experimental life in the laboratory. 
the microscope objectives and uh, general microscope setups are pretty complicated with a lot of material involved, like example given pockel cells for uh, intensity modifications and especially the scanning device and the microscope objective itself um, comprising a lot of exotic materials. So in the end, we have to provide a short pulse under the microscope objective, which I show here a measurement with an autocorrelation under a microscope objective with a total um, group delay dispersion compensation in our setup of 10,000 femtosecond square. And as you can see, we can still provide a pretty nice uh, pulse shape under the microscope objective. There's a small amount of TOD visible, which can also be compensated by a fine adjustment of the dispersion in the experimental setup. The long-term stability is one key issue for the experiments since uh, the studies in a mouse brain, for example, take a longer period of time. So here we have measured a long-term stability of our OPA output throughout the complete weekend, uh, up to 50 hours. The output power here was 4.2 watts roughly with a standard deviation of 0.4%. Also the pointing stability of such a system is a very critical point. Um, after a warm-up phase of 30 to 45 minutes, we can measure sub 10 microrad RMS uh, pointing stability of the entire system output. Pulse to pulse stability is another very critical point uh, in order to improve the signal noise ratio of our measurements uh, such that the active areas you, you are seeing in your experiments are really due to activity and not to pulse to pulse fluctuations in the intensity. Here are two measurements uh, for our 1,300 nanometer channel where we did a one photon and a three photon absorption measurement. The upper one is a one photon absorption measurement over a time frame of 800 uh, microseconds at two megahertz repetition rate, uh, where we have a 0.4% RMS stability of the pulses. And uh, the lower one is a histogram uh, showing a three photon absorption measurement where we are at 1%, 1 1.1% 1 .1 uh, RMS deviation of the pulse energies. Also, we did some stress testing of the system. In this case, this was a 960 nanometer system, which we operated at eight megahertz repetition rate. And as you can see, switching off and on the system for shorter or longer periods of time always brings the system back to uh, the standard operation parameters which shows the robustness and the reliability of this system. With having all that data shown, I want to point out once more the large versatility of our laser systems. For another customer, we have built a tunable laser system with a large spectral range, which we can access with our outputs, ranging from the UV into the infrared. Shown here is the spectral tunability of one of the channels of the system. In this case, we have used another type of cedar where we uh, generated the white light with the pump at 1350 nanometers. But uh, what I want to point out here is that we can easily amplify up to 1700 nanometers and also the entire visible range, the 1300, uh, 920, 960 area and also go down 800, which is the titanium sapphire range, doing second and third harmonics of these systems. With our laser products, we have reached a large customer base all over the world, where a lot of them are doing very successful research on brain studies with two photon and three photon microscopy setups. In conclusion, let me summarize what I have shown you in the last slides. We have built a powerful OPCPA system which can access all relevant wavelength options for a large variety of markers in multi-photon microscopy, which are basically 920, 960, 1300 and 1700 nanometers. All these wavelengths are possible to access with our laser systems and I've shown you data for 960 and 1300 nanometers. High pulse energies at very high repetition rates can be achieved with our systems, which are, for example, two microjoule at two megahertz presented in this work. Up to eight megahertz were shown already at 960 nanometers and also up to 60 megahertz are feasible with our laser systems. All this is combined with the superior long-term stability due to the compact and integrated setup of our laser systems.
With that, I want to thank you all for joining my presentation about our ultra-fast laser systems. If you need more information about this, please feel free to in, uh, email us at info at class5photonics.com. And in, in the end, I want to thank all the organizers for making this online event possible. And uh, during this very hard times we are facing in the world, and I hope to see you all next year uh, in live for the next Photonics West laser show. Thank you very much.